Sarasota Bay is part of our community, identity, and history. It's an estuary that's constantly changing. We're working to study how the global phenomenon of sea level rise will have local impacts right here in Sarasota. So the Sarasota Bay Estuary Program is a partnership of uh, local agencies that deal with environmental regulations. What we do is bring um, different agencies to the table, different municipalities. So you can talk about problems that everybody is having and, and solutions that might work for everyone. Well, I'm Mark Alderson. I'm executive director of the National Estuary Program here in Sarasota. And we've been conducting a series of workshops in the community to just openly talk about the uh, options for addressing climate change, compiling ideas, and also looking at vulnerability uh, of our existing infrastructure. Then as now, we were experiencing uh, high rates of development and high rates of migration to the state. Um, and development puts a lot of pressure on estuaries. If we don't come up with strategies to protect our bays, we put our economic growth and regional value at risk. We obviously have uh, an enormous amount of infrastructure invested here, and that needs to be protected. So obviously streets and roads and water and sewer and electricity are all kind of essential to modern life. Uh, most folks think that our seawalls are going to protect us, but they're not. As sea level rises, the water is going to get behind those walls and push them in. Eighty percent of Sarasota Bay is hardened, which means that it's covered in bulkheads and sea walls. They make it difficult for aquatic life to survive along the shores of our bay. Mangrove coastlines are known to provide the kind of protection for upland structures when we're facing a tropical storm or even a hurricane. As the sea level comes up, they need to move inland. The propagules fall off and they reproduce behind themselves. And so this is how the migration works. And when they hit a seawall, there's nowhere for them to go and they're gonna die because of the increased water levels. Ocean acidification is the other carbon dioxide problem. It has to do with the amount of carbon dioxide that we're putting into the atmosphere. That increasing rate of CO2 into our ocean is starting to shift the chemistry of our ocean. Organisms like corals that are really sensitive to environmental change are going to start to feel an effect. And it's not just corals, it's, it's all kinds of organisms. So it's something to keep on our radar and, and to be watching and monitoring. Sand and beaches are a valuable commodity, so humans have to share that space with nesting birds. There's just a myriad of threats that they face, and all three of the bird species that we're concerned with are considered state-threatened. Sometimes they'll try to re-nest, other times they just give up entirely. What we're concerned about with sea level rise is we could see shoreline parks like this go completely underwater, um, which would be a loss of coastal habitat, such as this living shoreline project, but also an opportunity for people to recreate by the bay. Sarasota Bay accounts for 11.8 billion to our local economy. This also includes 21,000 jobs, which accounts for 731 million in total earnings. Regardless of how you feel about carbon and climate change, sea level is rising in about an inch a decade. The bay and the gulf is really the center of, of why most people are here. It's about our quality of life here, and it's a big part of our mission as approved by our city commission to do everything we can to protect and preserve and improve that environment. Since 1989, the Sarasota Bay Estuary Program has helped restore over 1,600 acres of historic habitat in the Sarasota Bay watershed. Robinson Preserve is a coastal habitat where we chose to do more restoration. 
and in our design gave the opportunity for that mangrove to continue to survive against rising sea levels. With this site, when we acquired it, it was a lot of um, ecologically poor conditioned upland habitat that was highly infested with invasive exotic plants. When we excavated out the estuarine habitat, instead of taking that material off-site, we elevated the landscapes that we were going to restore uplands on. We're well known for our natural areas, and Robinson Preserve is a good example of that type of experience that is so valuable to people coming here to visit and to live. I think the more people understand the vulnerability that we're going to be facing, the more serious they will become about doing what they can do to uh, preserve our, our environment here on Earth. The way to help our ecosystems is to keep our backyards clean. The animals and organisms in Sarasota Bay, if we take care of it and keep it healthy, less fertilizer, less you know, pollutants, everything in there is going to have a better chance in, the, in a changing climate. Citizens play an integral role in helping us adapt to climate change in the Sarasota Bay region. I'm teaching lots and lots of students and I see that they get it and they see that they can provide simple solutions in the future that are going to make a big difference. We have time to address it. Hopefully strategies will unfold that will preserve our economic prosperity. As our community continues to grow, we need to conserve these habitats and keep in mind the benefits that they provide. We have a lot of smart people here who can come up with ideas on how to tackle these challenges and see ultimately they're going to require some investment and we need the public to be behind those investments. And the more we can do this from community to community, the farther we're going to advance and, and sort of hold our own against this enormous, really vital challenge.